We're woven together enough that a small loss in petroleum products, for example, the larger we grow, the smaller the percent loss of that resource does outsize damage to a society. In the U.S., there was an Arab oil embargo in the early 1970s, and we lost 5% of the total oil available to the United States, 5%. That percentage would have meant nothing in 1930, nothing. It would have been a minor inconvenience, fourth page below the fold news in American newspapers, and would have passed quickly. But at the size the United States had become and at the rate at which it processes energy, produces manufacturing output, moves around, it needed that 5%. In the fall of 1973, gas stations ran dry. Airlines cut back schedules. Factories were forced to close. And people started to carpool. Conservation measures were widely adopted to face this sudden energy crisis. America had learned the hard way of its tight dependence on fossil fuels. It is hard to believe that the U.S. government had acknowledged the existence of an energy problem over 30 years ago and that little has been done since then to fix it. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina damaged a few oil tankers and platforms in the Gulf of Mexico that represented a fairly small portion of the U.S. oil supply. It was enough, however, to cause gas prices to skyrocket, plunging the country into a mini-energy crisis. Why, almost 40 years after the 1973 oil embargo, are we still vulnerable to small oil supply variations we apparently didn't take into account the lessons of the past.